Hello everyone. I thought of making this video on quadratic equations and what I really wish to do is provide you some insights about this equation and actually I am going to assume that you already know how to solve this equation and um, my interest is not in solving it but rather looking at it in a particular way. Okay, So that is the goal. Here is uh, the, quadratic equation, the quadratic equation ax square plus bx plus c equal to 0. Okay, And of course, this constant a which is the coefficient of this degree 2 term should not be equal to 0. Okay, Because if it were to be 0, then your equation reduces to a, um, a linear equation right? because then it becomes bx plus c equal to 0 and that is a linear equation. So, that is the constraint and you know the general solution. So, we know that the general solutions in general you have two solutions which are given by let me write it in this manner. Okay, and of course, if you have if the discriminant which is b square minus 4 ac, if that is 0, then you have only one solution, right? It is minus b over a, or rather, the two solutions then coincide and give you only one. And if b square is uh, less than 4 ac, then you do not have. Uh, solutions which are real right because then this gives you a imaginary uh, component as well okay but that's not what i want to talk about let's first look at this equation and ask how many um, how many independent numbers you have in this equation or how many independent constants you have in this equation so it looks like 3 it looks like a b and c okay it looks like you need to specify these three things to completely specify this equation. Okay, but let us look at it carefully and see whether it is really 3 or, or something else. So, what I will do is I will divide this equation by a and remember I can do so because a is not equal to 0. So, dividing by a gives me x square plus b over a x plus c over a is equal to 0. Okay, So, you see that it is not really 3, but rather 2 numbers which is b over a and c over a. So, if you wish you can call b over a as beta and c over a as gamma or, uh, or um, maybe not, maybe I will call b over a as capital B okay, and c over a as capital C. So, you see all you need to do is specify these two numbers b and c capital B and capital C okay? and that specifies this equation. Okay? So, what you really need is the ratio of the coefficient of this degree 1 term okay? and the coefficient of degree 2 term that is one number and again the ratio of degree 0 term. Uh, the coefficient of degree 0 term and the coefficient of degree 2 term. These are the two quantities which you require and not 3 numbers. Okay? Which means that your solution should depend only on these ratios b over a and c over a. So, x the solution let me call the solutions as x1 and x2 in general they are 2 so I will call x1 and x2. So, x1 is not really I mean which in principle is a function of a b and c okay it depends on a b and c if you look at it this way okay actually takes the form of this kind as we said that it cannot depend on a b and c uh, independently but it should depend on these ratios so x1 should be a function of b over a and c over a okay? or equivalently 
it should be a function of capital B and capital C. Okay. So, good. <coughs> but now, um, let's look at this solution. And if indeed what I am, not indeed, but it's correct, what I am saying is correct, I should be able to express my solution in terms of B over A and C over A, okay, without uh, any trouble. So, let's, let's try doing that. Um, let's look at this. Let's write this equation as x square plus capital B x plus capital C equal to 0. And then what is the general solution? x, the, I mean the, that is the general equation and the solution is x is equal to minus b plus minus square root of b square minus 4 a, a is 1 c. Okay. Or if you, um, sorry, there is a factor of half also. I can put it this way. Okay. And if you wish to restore the small b and the small a, then you will have b over a square minus 4 and c is c over a. Okay, you see that the solution that I have involves only these ratios and it does not care about, it does not require knowing a, b and c independently. Okay, so it is useful to see it this way and this way of thinking is often utilized when you are um, going for higher studies, these kind of arguments are often utilized to restrict the functional form of certain things by observing such, um, by making such observations that, you know, the original equation cannot independently depend on these, these quantities, but rather only on these ratios and this object will be absent, this, this number will be absent or this coefficient will be absent, these kind of arguments. Okay, here another thing which you can, in this case of quadratic equation, you can see is, let us for a moment um, uh, think that x is not dimensionless, okay? meaning x is not just a number, but rather something which has dimensions. Let us say x has dimensions of length, okay? x is some, something which is measuring some length in units of meters or centimeters, whatever. Okay? Then, if x, so this is dimension length square, <coughs> okay, or here, let us look at this one. This will have dimensions length square, but x has dimensions of length, so b over a should supply the dimension of length, then only it makes sense to add these two objects. So b over a will also have dimensions of length, and c over a will have dimensions of length square. Okay, so that each term has a dimension of length square. So let me write that down. B over A should have dimension of length, and C <coughs> C over A should have dimension of length square. Okay, because I have assumed that X has dimension of length, and let's see whether this is um, reflected in in this result. So X has dimensions of length. B over A has dimension of length, which is good. Let us look at the square root term. B over A squared, so that gives you a dimension length squared, so that is length squared minus that constant. C over A has dimension length squared already. So what you have in the square roots is an object of dimension length squared and taking a square root gives you an object which has dimension of length. So it makes sense to add these. Uh, uh, it's it's okay that we are getting such such numbers. It's dimensionally correct, and one should always check the dimensions 
when one is doing calculation okay one of the easy, easiest ways to figure out your calculation is going wrong is by looking at the dimensions of all the terms okay and that and that's how you can spot if something has gone wrong already okay that's all i wanted to say in this video and i think it is nicer to remember the result in this form rather than in this form because this brings out clearly that your result only depends on these ratios and not these numbers independently. Okay, we'll stop here.